welcome back for today's session this will be your last session that we are going to discuss about the environment and we will try to conclude uh, this MOOCs course in this particular session so let us uh, start with light that is very important factor if we talk about working environment now you can see that if you are in a place where you need to do any kind of activity any kind of activity even if it is occupational or non occupational does not matter if you need uh, to do some kind of activity uh, for a normal person you definitely need the illumination you need the light right without light if uh, you will not be able to perform anything so understanding light and the effect of light is very important so today we will be discussing light along with light uh, earlier we you, uh, talked about thermal environment we talked about olfactory environment today we will talk about also the uh, vibration because in many cases we also face lot of uh, issues related to vibration at the workplace and overall when we are talking about ergonomics two important thing that is the participatory ergonomics and the macro ergonomics we will be discussing today and we will be concluding today's uh, class or session with this particular lecture ok. So, when we are talking about light photometry is a terminology that always comes in mind and we need to understand photometry clearly like as earlier also I mentioned we do not have much scope to explain and uh, work in detail as far as these topics and co our concerns we will be giving brief of it ok. So, international system of light measurement employed by organization or technical societies are concerned with the visual environment and they only try to do the quantification of the photometry. So, characteristics of physical world that can be measured using calibrated instruments that is one of the requirement and it is non synonymous with the visual perception and not correlated with the subjective impression of light ok. So, when we are talking about photometric quantities we normally try to measure these 5 elements or we, five, we try to understand these 5 factors. First one is luminous flux then luminous intensity illumination, luminance and luminance contrast ok. So, we will be explaining one by one. What is luminous flux? So, defined as the total amount of light which is being emitted by a light source and measured in a lumen, lumen is the unit ok. So, manufacturers require to print rated lumens on a product package because that is mandatory and rated lumen value you know is the average amount of light produced by large product sample operated at their rated voltage. So, values which is obtained in photometric laboratories not measured in the field. So, this luminous flux which if you are talking about it is always in a particular laboratory testing ok. What is luminant intense luminance luminous intensity? And so, it is the different intensity distributions of two or more light sources emitting the same number of lumens. Okay. So, same number of lumens. So, you are calculating more like uh, 2 or 3 or 4 different sources and what are the different intensities of distributions are there. So, measured in uh, this uh, the unit for the luminous intensity is the candle. So, lumens per solid angle that is the candle and values always obtained in the laboratory setup. Here also you need a laboratory setup. Third one is the illumination. So, this is the density of luminous flux falling on and reflected by given surface area. So, you have a surface there 
what is the kind of amount of density of luminous flux is uh, no, uh, coming and getting reflected. So, this is measured in flux or foot candles. We have a specific instrument called the, called the lux meter through that we may measure this particular variable. The fourth one is the luminance. This is the correlated exhibit of perceived brightness. Okay? So, measured in nits that is the candelas per square meter. Candelas per square meter or foot lambards that is the unit we use. Okay? So, it depends on the uh, geometry. So, when we are talking about size, shape, specifically shape of a particular object, okay. So, that there it is very important for us to understand the luminous. So, what kind of surface it is, what is the curvature of it. So, for all these cases, this is very important and this is going to affect your, your visual environment, okay. Then is last one is the luminous contrast. So, it is the measure of the difference in the brightness of two surfaces. That surface brightness measured by the luminous reflectance that is the uh, LC of a particular surface. So, vision impaired individuals prefer high luminous contrast to identify the tactile surface. Okay? So, if someone has some kind of impurity in the vision, so for them this contrast is more important. Okay? Uh, if, if they contrast, they identify the object very easily. Okay? So, for those cases, so when you are talking about the designing any element for the visually impaired, maybe not completely uh, uh, visionless, but there are vision, but it is a little different than usual. For those cases, maybe this type of concepts are very important. Now, when we are talking about light, we should understand what are the factors which is affecting the lighting requirements. So, task speed because if the uh, illumination level is different, luminous is different, the task speed also changes and the accuracy of the demand, light absorbent. So, what is the amount of light is getting absorbed in the surface? general working area, so working surface area and individual vision capability. This is very important and this is maybe it is difficult for someone to control, but these parameters you can control easily. Now, when we are talking about uh, all this illumination, we are talking about the visual environment, it is very important for us to understand the contrast which is not correct or incorrect or improper contrast. Okay? So, type of contrast problem that is the different light levels between the areas and the contrast between the colors of the object. So, immediate working area should be brighter than surrounding areas to ensure the reduced dis distraction from task areas. So, to very little contrast between the character and the background makes the reading task difficult. So, you can understand. So, suppose there is, look at this presentation. Your background is white and the letters are in black. So, contrast is very high. So, it becomes very easy for someone to understand. Visual acuity is quite good. Okay. Now, Take the same presentation, maybe some blue background or violet background or some other uh, no dark color background and write on the same uh, black color font, you will see that there are so much of difficulties in reading, right? So, this poor contrast actually is very important for us to understand when we are doing any kind of visual design. These all were about the light. Now, coming to noise. We all won't talk about noise more. I will introduce you to the two major concepts that is the speech intelligibility and the articulation index. So, what is speech intelligibility method? So, this is the assessing number of number 
of correctly identified words, phrases and sentences under any noise conditions. Okay. So, there will be some background noise if the person how they are assessing any words, phrases and sentences correctly. So, most common SI in uh, method is the speech interference level that is called SIL. Okay. The next one is the articulation index method. It talks about the assessing the number of correctly identified individual phenomena that is the consonants and vowels in mono or polysyllabic real or artificial words. Okay. So, it is developed that it developed the index based on the physical measurement like the speech spectra, audibility threshold and competing the noise resources. Okay. So, this is all about the articulation index method. Moving to vibration, two important concepts that is the hand arm vibration and whole body vibration. First, we will talk about hand arm vibration. So, it is the transmitted from work processes or equipment to workers hands or arm. So, only this palm and this hand portion okay, caused by the operating hand held any kind of powered tool. So, what happens you can see these are the symptoms <laughs> wrist pain, loss of grip, uh, pins or needles if you prick you, you find that kind of sensation, numbness, severe pain and lack of sense of touch. Okay, these are the common symptoms of hand arm vibration. So, exposure linked to irreversible condition this is very important to know okay it is irreversible condition it's not that if you try to uh, do some kind of uh, therapy or maybe rest or something this will go back okay so this is irreversible conditions of fingers and hands and characterized by the tingling and numbness in the finger so appearance of the oh, that is also very important blinching ok. So, this uh, this top of the fingers sometimes or part of the fingers it is like you know you get white fingertip and in cold conditions specifically and beginning the uh, irreversible uh, uh, finger blinching process. So, then you you do not actually what happens you do not get any kind of blood supply there or nerve sensations are not being picked up. So, extreme conditions with loss of blood supply to fingers lead to uh, you know, such kind of situation. So, hand arm vibration is very very dangerous those people who are what I can say using lot of uh, drilling machine or vibrating tool or uh, by the hand and arm they are developing this type of syndrome. How do we identify these are the stages stage 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, uh, 0 is the exposed to the vibration but you do not see any symptoms uh, intermittent numbness with or without tingling that is the stage 1. Stage 2 intermittent and persistent numbness and you have reduced sensory perception and stage 3 which is an really dangerous condition that is the persistent numbness, reduced tactile discrimination and the manipulative dexterity. So, this is very very dangerous and you should take care of these things when actually you identify stage 1 itself you should try to rectify it. Okay. So, this is the hand arm vibration. Now, how do we calculate the risk? So, this is how the numbering is done. I will just explain for one, maybe you can do the next. So, we have fingers, we have blocks over here, right? So, 1, 2 and 3. So, like that every th four fingers, these four fingers, these four fingers, you have numbering 1, 2, 3 and the only thumb we have 4 and 5. Okay. So, if you have any symptom in any one of this region, you just marked with. Okay. Here like this they marked. Now, counting starts from here. This is finger number 1, 
2, 3, 4 and 5. Fine. So, here you can see 0 means in thumb there is nothing. Then 1, 1 means in one region it is one, uh, uh, there is some symptoms. 3, that means 1 plus 2, this is 3, again here you do not have anything, here you do not have anything. That is why it is 0, 1, 3, 0, 0. That is how we give the scoring of hand arm vibration syndrome. So, how uh, the basic measurement parameters are? So, vibration describes motions as a vector quantity. So, defined by six vectors, three mutually perpendicular in linear motion that is the forward back, up, down and left, right and three in a rotational vector that is the pitch, yo and roll. Okay. So, vibration measurements are hand drum vibration measured from the tool handles where worker grasp the tool. So, suppose here is the handle where the person is holding that. So, that exact the point where the person is holding it. Okay, And whole body vibration measured, uh, we are going to discuss that next, that whole body vibration measured from top of this seat cushion because uh, whole body vibration normally comes from a sitting seat pan okay where people are sitting the whole the pan is shaking okay getting vibrated so cushion where the driver is sitting normally it comes for the automobiles that is why it is called as the driver is sitting so, coming to whole body uh, vibration, it is very important that hand arm vibration is only from your arm, uh, this whole arm and your th palm, whereas whole body vibration is for your whole body. How does it happen? When you are sitting in on a vibrating uh, seat pad, then only this is happening. Mostly in the automobile sector where people are you know, sitting in a driver's seat and uh, they are driving the whole while driving the seat keeps on vibrating and from that only this type of syndromes happen. So, use of rubber seat pad disc equipped with uh, triaxial accelerometer. So, x, y and z axis. So, for steady state measurements below one horizontal devices like piezo resistive or capacitive accelerometer need to be placed and data collection should last for at least 2 to 5 minutes that is important. Now, how do we do all those things hand arm vibration and whole body vibration measurement we have a specific instrument named vibration meter. It is available in the market. Uh, it is quite costly. So, many laboratory has this instrument and using that there are two separate device. One is for the whole body that you need to place on your seat pan and you need to do the measurement. Another is for your hand arm. Okay? So, using uh, vibration meter you can measure all these exposure level. Now, moving to very important concept which is need to be addressed uh, in many of the research cases that is the macro ergonomics. So, I am not going to discuss lot about it. However, I am going to dis, uh, introduce two concepts of it. One is macro ergonomics organizational questionnaire survey. So, what this is all about? First, you do need to do a conceptualization that is the evaluating the work system element and the outcome. Once you conceptualize that whole environment, you have to define the dimensions of each concept because you are talking about a particular concept. So, you have to define those concepts and you have to do the source evaluation that is the referring to other existing questionnaire survey and then you need to construct it and after constructing is done then you have to do a pre testing. In pre testing what you are going to do participants for verifying the clarity, effort and duration of the questionnaire that is can be done through this macro organizational questionnaire survey. Okay. So, that is one thing I would like to introduce. Another one is the uh, macro ergonomics analysis of structure. 
ओके एम ए एस सो स्ट्रक्चरल डायमेंशन so what are those structural dimensions one is the complexity another is the formalization and third one is the centralization so what is complexity degree of dif differentiation and integration existing within a work system structure formalization means number of mechanism uh, designed into a particular work system and centralization talks about the location of the decision making within any work system okay so these are the two uh, small tools that you can use for the macro ergonomics so if we go detail into the uh, these three variable like complexity formalization and centralization let us explain it little more so when we are talking about degree of differentiation so vertical horizontal and spatial now what is that vertical so number of hierarchical levels functioning within a particular work system so vertically how they are moving so hierarchical structure so in an organization how the hierarchy of the positions are being maintained then is the horizontal that is the departmentalization every department has their own hierarchy but every department works in a parallel situation so departmentalization or specialization degree in the work system and commonality parameters like goal and time orientation if we talk about the special differentiation so that talks about the span and count of location for any organizational activities and quantification measures that is the number of geographic location average separation distance employee proportion and all those things comes under the special differentiation okay that is the complexity when we are talking about complexity then uh, under that we need to talk about the degree of integration first one we talk about the degree of differentiation this one is talking about degree of integration so mechanisms designed into work system to ensure communication coordination and control among different work system elements so common integrating mechanisms include formal rules and procedures committees task teams liaison position in positions and system integration offices okay so these all things you need to talk about or discuss or collect information when we are talking about the degree of integration then external environment subsystem analysis because when we are talking about the macro ergonomics we should be very very careful about the subsystem because in a whole bigger system you have we will have lot many subsystems existing so socio economic educational political all these environment need to be taken care when we are talking about the macro ergonomics in a particular organization also cultural environment legal environment eh, all these things comes under the subsystem analysis or environmental subsystem analysis now the personal is very very important because a person working in a system is definitely going to affect the whole macro ergonomic environment in a in a, in any kind of organization so degree of professionalism the person is going to maintain what are the cultural influences or cultural factors are available what are the psychosocial factors are going to affect them so these are all important issues and everywhere you will get very niche tools which you can use to measure them assess them and implement them okay now once 
we use macro ergonomics in any kind of situation specifically when you are talking about the organization environment evaluation and all it is very important when we come to the uh, intervention when we come to the uh, changes when we come to, uh, we talk about the uh, know uh, doing some kind of implementation of your policies and you know intervention then participatory ergonomics comes into picture <laughs> because when some uh, for whom you are going to implement something if you take their views in consideration during the whole process then it is always bit, uh, you know expected the acceptance level will be quite good and quite high okay therefore when we are talking about macro ergonomics participatory ergonomics automatically comes into picture so what this topic is all about so the involvement of people in planning and controlling a significant amount of their own work activities with sufficient knowledge and power very important anyone cannot participate so the participant who are having some kind of knowledge and the power to influence both the process and outcome in order to achieve the desired goal Okay, this participatory ergonomics is a way to involve an organization's workers, supervisors and other workplace parties, maybe you know managers and all those people in jointly identifying and removing the hazard. Suppose you are going to a particular workplace and you yourself is uh, like you know you identify some kind of hazards but then the person who is working over there is not ready to accept yes this is a hazard then in that particular situation if you give some kind of solution guideline intervention to improve the situation they are not in a position to accept it whereas while evaluating the process if you include their views their participation then it becomes more easy for uh, the person to accept yes this is a hazard and we need to improve upon it okay so that is where the participatory ergonomics plays a very very crucial role in 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 any kind of such evaluation and such uh, you know implementation okay so it's very important and effective tool uh, for for any kind of workplace system now uh, participation approaches in uh, participatory ergonomics are these uh, three models you can use that is the parallel suggestion involvement that is the you know uh, you do consultation with them <laughs> job involvement and the high involvement okay that way you can do so parallel suggestions involvement says that it is driven by the philosophy of the uh, consultative participants because uh, if you are consulting with them regularly definitely they are convinced okay so workers urged towards the problem solving and idea generation influencing routine operation with or in the organization and quality circles or workers problem solving groups may be you know in some cases it happens that there are some people who are actually very influencing among the workers and they they um, take a role in you know problem solving cases if you can get them into the whole scenario it will be very much beneficial for uh, the application or you know data collection or um, any kind of implementation so work life quality improvement program that also is a, a parallel you can do what actually you do over there so you are going to employ parallel structure at multiple organizational level uh, you know merging two or more divergent lines of thought among the groups uh, striving to change worker organization relationship because it is very very uh, critical and uh, you know important sometimes suppose your supervisor and the person who is working under a supervisor the relation 
they have so if 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 you can combine both their emotions both their uh, no uh, peer interactions together in the approach then it will be very much beneficial so allowing the workers to influence the uh, conventional operation uh, extensive regular uh, no extensive rigor maintenance due to mind level marginal resistance and also the lack of complex problem solving expertise within the worker okay these things actually help in the parallel suggestion and it help in the participatory approach what are the other methods uh, which is important maybe we could not discuss them in the actual uh, no whole course but still i would like i feel that these are something important and i would like to uh, uh, know that i like to mention that you should know about them if required you can study them in detail so very important one is the cognitive walk through so this is the usability inspection method this is a particularly usability inspection method that assumes the evaluation capability from the user's perspective so it is an analytical method used to highlight the usability problems within the context of a product or a particular system learnability user perspective approaches and interacts within the product technology system by exploring the context of the use and also the identifying the pre existing schemes and mental models of the user within uh, in which is going to influence on product system exploration and the uses also it is employed to as a participatory ergonomics practice identifying the workers as users of the evaluation method so this is very very effective tool you can take it for such cases okay so cognitive walk through i am just introducing the subject i am not going to discuss it discuss the tool in detail or the like the kind of uh, practice we maintained earlier like you know uh, explaining the data collection and all those things however i would like to mention here how do we design the cognitive walk through model so what we try to do at the very initial stage we develop the detailed understanding of the target users uh, which is having a prior knowledge okay the second is the identifying the task representing the user actions in a real world then we create the detailed task based scenario because we are talking about a particular work procedure so then walk through action sequence required for a task uh completion so if you have task task 1 task 2 task 3 task 4 how do you work through them okay <laughs> then the discuss about the task relevant cognitive process uh, to complete the action sequence and finally we identify the learning and adaptive responses expected to occur during the users exploration okay and this is being studied discussed in various literature so this is very very useful and very much uh, solid or i can say effective tool if you are talking about the participatory approach participatory ergonomics uh, macro ergonomics and cognitive ergonomics in concern okay so cwm that is the cognitive work through measurement method or method as a macro ergonomics assessment tool as i mentioned earlier what exactly it does so despite being a common product design approach because this is very general suppose you are you developed a particular design now you want to test how that is going to uh, used by the person so you just do a cognitive walk through you will know where they are finding any difficulties to use it or how easily they can use it how they are understanding the uh, no references so that is where the cognitive 
walkthrough method is very very useful. So, researchers conduct inspection on group level within the organization to identify the conflicts and organizational usability issues. And these usability issue uh, assessment of conceptual work system designs for identifying the success potential of any kind of new work system or integration content extent of existing work system. Now, suppose you have four models ready. Now, if you want to understand which is very much beneficial, you can take cognitive walkthrough method for all four and then you compare them. Okay, so once you have the data in hand, you can really understand the where the glitches are and how do you remove them. So, then you can do more improvised product, more uh, uh, refined product for a particular thing. It is not about product, it's, uh, it talks about the whole system as well. Okay. So, this is very, very easy method and useful method. Now, as I do for most of the courses, most of the tools that uh, know explaining the advantages and disadvantages. So, if we talk about the advantages of the uh, cognitive walkthrough method, so measurement, this is the, these are the advantages and these are the disadvantages. So, in terms of expert involvement, you see expertise supports usability problem identification. So, it is very easy. However, that problem differ from actual user because you are talking about only experts, right? So, there may be uh, you may get some kind of disadvantages. Same if you are talking about the costing, it is, it is relatively a lower resource demand whereas the if you are talking about time time demand is quite high okay so therefore you need to really understand all the pros and cons of these cognitive work through measurement technique based on your requirement you can really choose that you should uh, take this as a tool or you should not take this as a tool for your case okay so this is all about uh, cognitive walkthrough and we just reached at the end of this particular uh, course, MOOCs course that is the uh, ergonomics res uh, you know, research techniques. So, whatever techniques we use in uh, when we are talking about the ergonomics research, we try to compile maximum possible methods, tools and techniques and we reached at the end of the program here. Okay? So, as I mentioned in the very beginning, mainly we divide the whole thing into physical and cognitive. Also, we have some component in environment. However, mostly physical and cognitive. Okay? So, based on your requirement, you can choose any one of them. I do not say that these are only tools, maybe there are many other tools available, but these are the tools which are normally and commonly used in ergonomics research. Okay? That is all for today and that is all for this program. So, uh, let us meet at the exam and I wish all the best for all of you, you know, for the exam which is coming up. Thank you.